Today is April 19th. The Bucks lose all three to the Metropolitans, coming back home to try and bounce back against the Red Sox. Hayes, Jones, offense, defense. Let's talk about it all. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast, where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh, and I'm joined as always by my brother Jake. What's up, Jake? What's going on, man? He stopped for just a second. It was just enough to freak me <laughs> out. <laughs> this was the second time we've done the intro. Yeah. Because that's how things work. Or don't. So, or, yeah, or how things don't work, I guess is right. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, um, three, three games sweep for the bad guys. Mm-hmm. Hey, you're going to have those, right? Right. I mean, you could not have those, and that would be ideal, but you could have those, too, and you can mm-hmm. bounce back from them. Yeah, um, not the end of the world. No, you kind of run into a buzzsaw a little bit. Mets are playing really good right now, except for Lindor. How weird is that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you watch the game. Obviously, everything hindsight twenty twenty. There's a lot of things that happen that you think, boy, had we done X, Y, Z, mm-hmm. right? Had this gone our way, had that uh, obviously, right? And so yeah. you say, no, this team is to blame because they they didn't, you know, whatever. Okay. You know, it it's gonna happen. It's a lot yeah. easier to look back in hindsight and see things. So we're gonna get into some of those things. Um, sweeps are never fun, but they don't have to be the worst day of your life, <laughs> which is apparently <laughs> what I saw from some pirate fans uh when they get to typing. Get baseball yeah, here. Yeah, like it's it is what it is, man. It's baseball. It's you have up and down, man. Hey, it's better than January seventh when you don't have baseball to watch. Yeah. So, all right, um, we've got some things to get into. Obviously, we uh, I kind of alluded to. I mean, obviously, Hayes at the back thing. We've got some. That's gonna that's gonna be a part of of, of a huge discussion, right? It, it's gonna be all over the place, um, but it all ties in together. And then, you know, we'll talk a little bit about pitching at the end. Um, I, I guess we'll sandwich it a little bit, right? We'll talk about some pitching at the beginning, and we'll talk about it at the end. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what are you going to talk about after a three-game sweep? There's not a whole lot of headlines. Somehow we found ourselves with at least one. And then we just get to basically – I just dropped my baseball. <laughs> we, we basically get yeah. to complain about it, but without yeah. complaining, right? Yeah, I mean, like, how how do you not catch that ball? And Jared Jones doesn't even give up any hits. <laughs> what, wait, what ball? Where the one I... Reynolds slid for? Oh, yeah. Pete Alonzo's, Pete Alonzo's quote-unquote double. Yeah, I mean, he's sliding for it, so they're always going to give him a double, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that was his only hit. That's the second time this year. Yeah. That we've had a, a play that, I mean, yeah, I mean, you whiffed on it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he could have made it, but. Listen, I had, it, it's, it's, di- the reason I ask is because I didn't want to be wrong about which play because I also saw people saying that Sawinski, that that, the ball that he almost caught on Marte's home run was a catchable ball. <laughs> just because he got his glove on it? I think he just missed the glove. I, oh, 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 Marte's home run. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, my head went back to when he hit the wall. Oh, geez. He hit the I mean, he hit the wall again, right? Because he <laughs> was trying to rob a home run uh, right. that hit on the top of the railing. Now, is it catchable? Yeah, but it would have been unbelievable. Right. Oh, uh, right. but but Taylor could have got there. Dude, I got to tell you, man. And I I've know I've already I, seen him miss a couple. I, I, I know I went a little bit on a rant last week about Taylor. I don't think he's worthless. I think he's a good center fielder. He's not played well. And I'm I'm already getting tired of the overhype. 
Like he's not that much better. And I hate yeah. like I know that sounds crazy. And I think and it, long term, I think he will be, right? Because there's those little things are gonna go a long way. But like I just haven't been impressed yet. He he's got a noodle arm that's not accurate. And yeah. I'm not getting into to Taylor because like I said, I don't dislike Taylor necessarily. I just think that there's a little bit of a a little bit of an overhype. When everybody we have well, you want a gold glove. Sure. Hey, listen, so did Brian Reynolds. Yeah. So here was here's where we are. Now, granted, the numbers are not the same between those two guys. <laughs> and I still believe that Michael Taylor is a good center fielder. But I'm not gonna sit here and say of a robbed home run, like, oh, he would have had that though. And 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 if he did, would you have just said, nice catch, buddy? That was a catchable ball. No, you're going to freak out about it because it would have been an <laughs> unbelievable play. Probably yeah. even harder for Taylor to make because it would have been a backhand. Yeah. Yeah. So, listen. Um, the, the the ball that was a catchable ball that w- I'm throwing the quotes, but my screen's not catching. The catchable ball that Taylor missed, I mean, he really could have robbed that home run in the last series when he jumped. He got to the wall and jumped up and just whiffed. I think unless you're in Boston and you're standing in that little thing over by the bullpen where the where the wall's like three feet off the ground, I mm-hmm. think that has to be the only place in baseball. Now, maybe I'm forgetting one, but that has to be the only place in baseball where I would say you should have robbed somebody of a home run. Robbing somebody of a home run is, a, is an extra effort, a, an unbelievable yeah. play. So yeah. there is never a you should have had it on a home run. Right. But that's that's my opinion. Maybe because I was a center fielder and I never got to do that, and I was a <laughs> and I was a very good center fielder and I never yeah. got to do that. So it does. That's not you know what I mean. That's a very high level play. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's get into some stuff. Let's start with Quinn Priester getting the start Friday night. Um, they did announce that he's on the taxi squad right now and that he will be activated before the game. So Quinn Priester getting his first start of the season. Uh, up with the Pirates. Um, you liking this? Yeah. It's been I a little... Think he's earned it. Yeah, there's been a little bit of walks again uh, down in AAA, but I think what we saw at spring when we saw him, right, mm-hmm. was that I think he's at least ready to pitch at this level. Yeah. And if it's... I don't... We don't... Obviously, we don't know the Marco Gonzalez... Uh, the extent of the injury yet, but when we do find that out, um, we'll know how long Priester is going to have to be here. But if it's two, three starts and Marco's back, I think that's a pretty good timeline to say, let's give him a little cup of coffee here for the season. And then maybe we can identify some things that are an issue. Right. Yeah. And so I, you know, if there are issues, I mean, my goodness, we've really, uh, we really hit the jackpot so far. Uh, this season was starting pitching. The numbers are in every single way better than they were last year when they were on this, the crazy start that they were on last year. Right. Yeah. And to be honest with you, they weren't even the pirates weren't here where we are now last year. And we still finished April 20 and eight. Yeah. And I, I, I believe I have that up, but I don't Never mind. Uh, but but like I did a comparison uh, on Twitter this week, and I was like, "Look at this. Here's the records, and here's the ERAs for starting for starting pitching. Actually, I think this was no, I think this was starting pitching. I mean, there's more quality starts. There's a better ERA. There's more strikeouts per nine. There's less walks per nine. I mean, it is all the way through. Less home runs per nine. It is an improvement. I mean, this rotation." We talked about that it needs to get better. It did. It got better. Yeah, absolutely. This is better than Velasquez and Rich Hill and Oviedo. I mean, it's crazy because this is a, like, four. Keller's the only one. And yeah. it is it is better. Unless it was. No. Falter was not their early season. Because that was a trade last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Four different Castro. guys 
Who's the other guy that I'm not thinking of? Uh, Velasquez, Oviedo. Um, oh, you know what? It, Ronzi. Yeah, it was Ronzi. Or was it Ronzi or, or Ortiz, one or the other, early on, right? Anyway. Um, mm, yeah. I mean, this, this rotation's doing better. Yeah. So, uh, without question. So... That's been a that's been a good piece, but Quinn Priester now gets to join into that, and maybe he'll be just as good. Who won't be joining into that on Friday was the guy who pitched tonight in Indianapolis, Paul Skeens. Um, another three and a third, another eight stri- eight strikeouts. Uh, Sixty five pitches was the number this time. Still got him through three and a third because he had a couple walks. He gave up his first extra base hit as well. It's I mean it's unacceptable at this point. I mean. What is unacceptable? Uh, giving up an extra base hit. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> a little bit of humanness there, right? <laughs> I like the line that, um, um, yeah, my, my his name is going to leave my my tongue here. Uh, Jack, that does the games there. Uh, Jack McMullen. Mm. I like the line that he used when he Skeens pumped a couple at 102 or whatever, and he says that uh, Skeens is running a fever. And I was like, <laughs> "Oh, nice! I like that. I like that." Um, yeah, I mean, just dominant. Uh, we got the numbers here: four games, twelve and two thirds, <laughs> twelve and two thirds innings, twenty-seven strikeouts, four walks, and two of them were today. Uh, five hits, one of those a double, and he has yet to give up a run. Uh, when you're throwing three innings a game, though, you're not facing anybody the second time through. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he, yeah, I think he's special and we're getting to, we're getting to see the stretch out down there. And I think that all of this translates. Yeah, I mean, I it's it's good. He's got command. Like I said, he he walked the guy on four pitches today. He got to a three zero count, I think, twice. So this was a little bit of a oh, what did I? He's got something actually to watch. I gave up a double and I walked two guys. This was a bad outing. <laughs> Eight <laughs> strikeouts. He had six strikeouts in the first two innings. All right, let's get moving on because there's a couple things that we want to really talk at length about and. The first one here, I think this is going to be a fun conversation, and we are going to go to a lot of different places here, and I think that we're going to be able to do it with, like, great transition. I, I'm seeing, I'm visualizing, and I think we're going to do, we're just going to flow right through it. You're going to say, well, they were just talking about catching, and now they're not, and you're not even going to know when it happened. Because I said that, it's going to be really bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go! All right, we're just a li- we're just a little stitches here. Yeah. So Paul Skeens th- was throwing pitches tonight to uh, Grandall, mm-hmm. and so he's on his rehab assignment. He's catching, um, and I, I I after Skeens was out, I turned the game off. So I know that there's he's catching X amount of innings. Then eventually he has to catch a whole game, right? Eventually he has to catch back to back days. So you could see where that rehab assignment could take some time. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, Joey Bart catching a bullpen. I don't know if it was in New York or if it was in Philly. Or wait, Philly. Where were we just at? For the weekend. Yeah, Philly. Philly was the weekend. Here we go, man. Um, Whether it was in Philly, because they did say it happened a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. So it could have happened the first night in New York. It could have happened the last night in Philly, whatever it was. Just catching in the bullpen and a guy hitting BP, it's a home run and smacks him in the head with the ball. I, I, I just, what are the odds? I just don't know how these things can happen. And this kind of stuff happens, and not just to the Pirates, right? But these freak things happen every once in a while in baseball and, and it just it just blows your mind. <laughs> And I, you know, Clint Barm has fallen down the steps in Colorado carrying groceries. That was uh, Tulowitzki. No, that was Barmus. Mm, I don't think so. 
You're going to make me look it up, ain't you? Not right now, but later we will. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the Barmas injury with the groceries, but might have been. Um, he had Trevor Bauer with the with the drone. He had somebody <laughs> else that was drone. that was cutting food and cut his hand. Like you know, just these crazy things. Did somebody somebody get hit by a, a door or so? I don't know. Somebody fell out of bed one time. I don't know. Anyway, bumped his head. I'll let that breathe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're talking about injuries. It made sense. All right. Eventually, something has to be done because does Bart, if Bart is early, if it's like, oh, he's got to go on concussion, then you could bring up Grandall right now. But you're just kind of pushing this issue down the road. You've got Davis, you've got Grandall, you've got Bart. Two of these guys, if you send them down, you're basically getting rid of them. The other guy is your former 1-1 Henry Davis, who won a spot and now is struggling at the plate. And do you crush a guy's uh, confidence? Do you, you know, what is the actual play here? Is there a legitimate adult conversation that you can have to say, hey, we believe in you and we think you're going to go down to AAA and rake and that's what we want. We want you to get hot. But also... This is the adult conversation part. We need to have three catchers available. And right now, delay is not available. And if one of these guys goes away, we don't have any options if somebody gets hurt. And if and if that's Bart, if that's if that's Bart that you send down and lose, and you're depending on Grandall, who was hurt all spring and all so far this season, like that's not a great security blanket. So then it's like, well, maybe we should let Grand all go. But the problem is, is you got Bart with a possible concussion right now. Mm-hmm. Where, how do you do this? If you're saying, well, you know, we talked before about carrying three catchers. Is there possible you carry three catchers? Well, we'll probably get to that in a minute, right? But let's, <laughs> let's sit here because I want you to have a comment on – the option of sending Henry Davis down, where are you, where's your head on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I keep bouncing back and forth because I've said in the past that you know th- there are guys who they've shown everything they can show in AAA. They got to work through it at the major league level if they're ever going to move forward. But also, it's just it just looks bad. Like he can't hit a fastball. Yeah, and I'm just. So something's got to give. He's got to work on hitting for a minute. Uh, let's catching has been fine. It hasn't been horrible, right? That's what we said. We said it's fine. It's been yep. better than we thought the way they talked. But there, there, there's still I work haven't to do, noticed but... him a lot. I haven't noticed him a lot. There's been a couple things here and there, but for the most part, it's been fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's focus on hitting right now. Because we need him to hit. Yeah. Well, and this is going to be a theme. I mean, one run the last two games. I don't care what happened in those games. I don't care if they scored two runs or 22 runs. You're not going to win scoring one. Right. I agree. Obviously. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I think that all of those things that you say, I think, are, are possible to say, well, working on catching can happen at the major league level. Working on hitting can happen at the major league level. And so, like, I think that those things are also doable at the major league level, but I think this caveat of the situation might say, Mm -hmm. you can also work on these things in AAA. There are some things that you can't. There are some things that we can say, hey, if we send this guy to AAA, it's not going to help. You know what I mean? Like, he's not going to learn anything. He's got to right. he's got to be here in order to actually become a better baseball player. But I think right now, to your point, I think there are things that Henry Davis could do that would make him better, <laughs> and <laughs> if he's in AAA, and so I think that that is possibly an option. Although I I don't know if it's a play or not. I it's such a tough move too because of you know just the whole thing. And I know that like he had the one good game right, but. 
it's just overall, and we can say that too about anybody like, oh, this guy's struggling. Well, he was good Tuesday, but <laughs> it's like, well, just Tuesday though. So you're yeah. going to have, just like if you're going good, you're going to have an 0 for 4 with 4 strikeout game every once in a while. Like it's just going to happen, right? Yeah. So what I, what I alluded to saying carry three catchers so that you have, make sure you have those. We don't even have enough infielders right now. Right. Uh, we don't, we can't do three out or three catchers. So what you're saying is we've addressed, we've, we've noticed a problem. It's as clear as day. If, if any of our infielders is banged up, we'll say if, if Hayes back locks up on him, if Cruz just needs a couple days off his legs, he looks tired by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Already. Yeah. And that's fine. He'll, He'll he'll bounce back quick, right? Uh, but he right now looks exhausted, and that's yeah. he missed the whole year. Yeah. Um. So anyway, you have these ga- guys that are that are going to need days off, sometimes multiple days, and so you get you get Key Brian. You say the back's locked up; he's unavailable, which now means you have no backup infielders. And then Cruz in the first inning of a game. Looks like, oh no, here we go. I mean, it looked scary. Yeah. I wonder if the air was just chilly that night because the catcher also, when the catcher's interference, the heave like freaked out. I thought he's done. He's done yeah. for the year. And then he stayed in the game. <laughs> I'm like, what <laughs> the heck? Yeah, I thought he broke his hand. Yeah. So, but Cruz at second base, and you kind of saw the way that he tripped up, and everybody's like, he doesn't know how to slide. And it's like, well, first off, he was. He was tagged in the foot, and which is why I'm surprised that they even had to tag him at the end because he was tagged. His whole leg moves towards his other leg, and I don't know that you can actually do that in the middle of the air. Maybe you can if you're a freak, and he certainly qualifies. So <laughs> it looked like he got kind of got tagged. It tripped him up. Maybe it didn't look like there was like a roll of an ankle I, I, but maybe there was more fear than actual pain, which yeah. I I could say is probably legit. Like, that's okay if that is the case. <laughs> like, because you would be, right? Yeah. So anyway, he stays in the game. If you had an extra infielder, I, I just don't know if he stays in the game. Right. You just take him out for precautionary reasons. When he hit that ground ball to second base later in the game, and yes, I know it was 111, and even though McNeil kind of bobbled it, like he that ball hit his glove before Cruz was out of the batter's box. Mm-hmm. But he did bobble it a little bit. The throw had to go back to second, back to first, and you watch that play again, and you're saying, well, Cruz ain't hustling. I don't think he had any more in him. I think it was like, you need to play this whole game. You're running at 75%. Yeah. No question about it. I mean, here's the deal. Your option is Connor Joe at second base. He's never played there in the major leagues. In 2018, he played 17 innings at second base, and he had four chances to make a play. Like, that's it. He's had four professional chances, so that's your option, (laughs) which is not good. No. So, with that said, you found a problem. Gonzalez, Peguero, one of them, they've got to come up. Yeah. Or if Key Brian Hayes is going to miss five days, he's you're going to have to make him miss 10. Yeah. Like he just has to go on the IL and you've got to bring somebody up here because the prop, yeah. the cost is an outfielder. Jake, what do you do? If it's time to move an outfielder so that you can have enough infielders, you know, six is kind of the magic number anyway. Not sure why we went with five. What do you do? You can't you can't bring up another catcher because you've already got to get rid of an outfielder. Who are you going to get rid of? They've all really been good in yeah. their own way. Right. Yeah, it's a tough question. It's uh, um one of the reasons I'm glad I'm not in that situation. <laughs> um but but you got yeah, you you don't want to send Oliveris down. He's about the only thump we got right now. He's about your only option you have right now. That's I the know. problem. Yeah. It it basically has to be him, and he's been good. Mm-hmm. You've got Taylor, who's the best defensive, but probably the worst hitter of the group. 
Yeah. Well, certainly the worst hitter of the group. You know, Sawinski and Reynolds really should be the starters, you know what I mean, most days. Mm -hmm. So you certainly don't want to send either of those two down, which obviously right. Reynolds is out of the question. Connor Joe has been one of the reasons why we're where we are, even though it, <laughs> it's been rough lately because this is Connor Joe. If he plays too much, he will struggle. It's a really fine line. Now, he's a tough guy because it's <laughs> like, wow, this guy's hot. We need to play him every day. And then you play him every day and it's like, ah, yeah. Now we need to not play him for a week. <laughs> but he's not an option to go down, really. Right. I mean, he's your other first baseman, so he's actually double duty a little bit there. The problem is, is that your DH, if he's going to play the field, he's going to play the outfield, which means you shouldn't have more outfielders than you have infielders. Right. Because in a pinch... He can play right field. He mm. can't play second. You just have to figure that part out. Yeah. And I don't know how you do it. Do, I mean, if you're looking for offense, I mean, this team needs it. <laughs> for sure. So really, do you just say this is what we're going to deal with because we need the best offense we can possibly have? In that case, I I mean, I know Leak has been hot, but I question your decision to go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, and you got, you got a guy down in... Triple A right now is, you know, hitting the ball pretty well. And Nick Gonzalez, yeah, and and Pagero was. So, yeah, I don't know. You've got two guys down there who, who are probably capable of filling those shoes for a while. I think maybe if you want to be cautious and you want to be smart to have enough infielders, you can't keep Key Brian on the bench unavailable. Can't happen. Right. You need right. to. You need to just retroactive that thing and let him be out ten days and give Gonzalez or Peguero a little bit of time. It's the same sort of thing. You're going to need to do this. It's okay that he goes up and back down. If he yeah. understands that's what's going to be the whole time, and if you're going up for Hayes, you do understand that, let Hayes rest a little while. Yeah. You need that. that. You need him. And, it, you know, if you could go, I think at this point, you're looking at what, the Boston series and then, that's already six days, so he's coming back before next weekend. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I, I look to see them make some sort of move there because when you look at the situation, that's where they're at. Yeah. And it, there's this offensive thing that you're juggling. There's this... Their outfield group has been interesting, the way that they've utilized them, and they're just not doing that with the infield because they play every day. You've yeah. got to have a backup in the infield. And whatever it means, you can't... There's really nobody in the outfield that you can just get rid of. And you got Yark over there barking, saying it has to be McCutcheon has to go. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> I just think funny. that there's... I think that there's more to it than... First off, Kutch has always started slow. He's going to be okay. Yeah, uh, it's not going to be you know old Kutch, but the leadership goes a long way, mm -hmm. and there's not a whole lot of it. So you, you just have to have it. It's part of building a baseball team, and you have you literally have to have it. If anything, you could say that he just doesn't start, but even then, that's not part of the problem. Right. Part of the problem is there's not enough infielders, so he doesn't do you any good on the bench either. Like he's he should be starting, and uh, yeah, it's just wild. Yeah. All right. So while we're only scoring one run, and that is the main problem um, that we're facing here, Jared Jones. This is the this is kind of our last thing here. Jared Jones is a stud. Yeah. And yeah. he went five innings this week. He he had the one hit that we just talked about. Um, he had seven strikeouts, which is like historic. Strasburg, Tanaka. Tanaka kind of counts for me. I, guys who played professional baseball somewhere else and then come over are a little bit less of a rookie for me. Yeah. Uh, I understand it qualifies, but it's a little bit less of a rookie in my eyes. Um, so, But Strasburg, obviously 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, and then whoever that other guy was from 18-something. Yeah. I don't know. But... I don't know why. I don't actually think he was from 18-something, but I don't 
maybe I've heard the name. I, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, point is, it's historic, and he's awesome, and that's all fun. But he threw five innings, and they took him out. And he and Shelton both said that that was predetermined before the game. Sure. And you and I have been pretty vocal about situations like this and say that, hey, sometimes you read the room. <laughs> sometimes you say, you know what? I'm going to go with my guy. Is this one of those times, Jake? Uh, it's it, yes and no. So if they have, you know, they're looking at pitch count, they're looking at innings, they're, they're kind of trying to figure out what to do. You do have to look at both of those things because you are each, even though you've only thrown 59 pitches and maybe your goal was 75. You've still gotten hot, gotten ramped up and went in and pitched an inning and then sat down. And you get up and you pitch an inning and you sit down. Those go a long way into, I would say, more, way more than the actual pitch count. It's just that that you know taking a break for it, of course equal his breaks or more. Like, I don't know. I I've I've actually heard that uh, recently too. I mean the um, the guys on the fan forum were talking about this week as well. And they were talking about those ups and downs, right? Mm -hmm. I I don't know, you know, where it lies on there, but like, it's one of those whatever comes first thing, right? Mm -hmm. So like, whether it's five innings or whether it's seventy five pitches or whatever it was. I don't remember the pitch count. Well, they didn't but... say, right? <laughs> They're not going to say sure. what it was. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that, that, yeah. But it's the predetermined thing that kind of gets me on this, and it's. Well, it's different than man. He's got a shutout. I, 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 you can even go back to Martin Perez, right? A hundred pitches. He's in the eighth inning, and then you question the move to Bednar. Yeah, Bednar blows it up. It's all to me. That's even a different discussion. Early on in the season, I, I'm still probably making that move. I mean, you've got an elite closer who's been at the All Star game the last two years and mm -hmm. led the league in saves last year. I think you just trust that guy, and I think it's okay that they trusted that guy. And, you know, I mean, we understand. And if everybody's mad at Bednar right now, that's fine. He, he's going to be all right. He's right. He's got to work through this, and mm -hmm. he's got to get better. And what are you going to do, right? The, right? He's a closer, first off, and we don't want to go into this, right? But we've talked about this a million times. You bring a closer into a situation that's not a safe situation or not a high-leverage situation, he's not going to pitch well. I think that's all that happened. Uh, in New York, I think he just, I mean, m some of those pitches were actually great pitches that got hit. So yeah. some of, you know what I mean? So I think, you know, that wasn't the same problem that he had when he was spiking guys in the back of the, with the curveball. Uh, the, the, was it the Nemo double down the line? It was like three yeah. inches above the zone. Right. Absolutely. It wasn't even it's a, a strike. Pitch. It was, it was 97, 97 above the zone. Absolutely good. The next one, the one base hit was, was painted in the bottom corner of the of the of the zone maybe there was a couple ticks off velo or something but like that's still a fine pitch and yeah. you know you're you're going to get a lot of ground balls with that pitch so no it, you know i it wasn't the same however it wasn't necessarily like he usually misses bats so it wasn't as effective chalk it up to a hot team if you want chalk it up to maybe it wasn't supposed to be there or maybe they pitched a guy's strengths i don't really know Point yeah. is, it's not. It's it wasn't the the spiking guys in the back and not able to throw a strike kind of a game. Right, right. And so, I, it, he'll get right. I I, yeah. I believe that, and I believe that yeah, you I, you know you go with your guy. Um. Yeah. So anyway, it it's not the same discussion as the Martin Perez discussion. This is different, and mm -hmm. I've I've heard a lot of people who are very critical of this. It's kind of a topic right now. There's a lot of injuries, and there has been for you know some recent years. There's been a lot of people down, and I think it's a little magnified right now because it's a lot of stars. You know what I'm saying? Like you're you're yeah. seeing when you see Strider and Bieber and names like that, you're like, whoa, wait a minute, this is this is the big time. I mean, already you don't have Kershaw pitching, already you don't have Verlander going yet. You know what I mean? You've already Scherzer's got a, not Scherzer's not going. 
there's guys, you know what I mean? And there's more than that. Those are just the ones I thought of off the top of my head. I mean, look at Miami. I mean, Giolito went down this year. Yeah, and and you know Sandy Alcantara um, and whoever else down there. I mean, they've got issues in yeah. Miami, and you know what I'm saying. So like, there's there's a lot of guys right now that you're that you know that are bigger like bigger names, guys that have won mm-hmm. a Cy Young. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, I we just named Bieber's got one. Cole's out for a while, right? I know it's not TJ, but he's out for a while. Right. He's got a yeah. Cy Young. Uh, Contra's got a Cy Young. Scherzer, Verlander, Kershaw. Or did I already say Kershaw? Be- no, I said Bieber. You had six guys right there that we just named who are out for a while. Strider has, has Strider won one? But he's been I don't close. Think so. But he's been I close. Mean, yeah. So, like, you know, when you start naming those guys, I mean, yeah, now is the time to be cautious. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to work. But I don't mind them trying. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about a team who last year, last offseason, November, was a little bit criticized for, for just sending Oviedo, Johan Oviedo, to the Wolves. Right? You were you, We were all criticizing them for overusing Oviedo. Yeah. And then just to April. It hasn't been that long ago. But just to April, we're like, what are you doing? We were supposed to win that game. And it's like, well, hold on a second. What do you want? Do you want him to just pitch regular and then when it's his time, like Strasburg, sometime in August say, all right, dude, it's your (laughs) offseason. You know what I mean? Like, Because that is an option. Yeah, That's one way to do it. I don't like the Rowanzi treatment. I don't like the shutdown in the middle and then ramp back up and get stretched back out. I think that was actually harder. Yeah. I think if you do it, you either milk it all the way through or you just shut him down and give him a long off season. I don't like the it's like he played two seasons in a way, you know what I mean? And so I yeah. personally don't like that one, but I just think it's it's not a thing that we should be critical of. I think that we should be protected. I mean, we found out how special this guy can be when he's on a heater, I, which I would mm-hmm. call this. I mean, maybe not. I mean, I, it has to be. It's not going to be this good yeah, all right. the time. Like it's a, That's like Jake Arrieta for that year and a half stretch that he was on, like yeah. where it was just unreal, right? And I'm not saying he's going to be Jake Arrieta. I'm just saying when you're, when you're going really good, you can be this good. Yeah. But there's going to be times when you're maybe not quite this good. Yeah. And I, I appreciate, and, and he kind of, alluded to you know he he appreciates the fact that they think this highly of him that they want to make sure he does stay healthy yeah he's i appreciate them protecting me yeah there's some of that right that you know that a gamer wants the ball Mm -hmm. and you know i mean he he wants to be out there when he gets a chance to cool down and he's talking to media he's not going to say he's not going to say he's got a problem with stuff he's going to try to say the right things all that's sure. fine. I, I do think that there is something there to say, no, I want to be pitching when it comes to the end of the season. And if this is what yeah. it takes, listen, if your offense is going to score one run, it's not going to make a huge difference anyway. When he came out of that game, if you thought, well, the good, because we're in position to win. We had one run. You know what and I'm saying? I mean, we weren't looking good. No, the RBI the was, that was the that was the Reynolds check swing, right? Yeah. That was that game. See, yeah. the check swing. That's what I was telling you about the Connor Joe mistake running bases, right? And you say he should have got a hit for that because he got a hit. Well, he also mm-hmm. got a hit on a check swing. So baseball yeah. works itself out, right? Yeah. yeah. What do they say ball don't lie, right? Yeah. So anyway, that he got it back, you know, <laughs> on one that he probably shouldn't have. <laughs> so it, it all works out in the end. Can uh, we just talk about his expression for one second when yeah. he got that hit? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Not said. <laughs> I thought you were actually going to talk about it. Okay, Brian Reynolds, man. He, then Love you do like guy. the double. Yeah, he's. Like, yeah, <laughs> uh, the the double fist, kind of real excited, you know. Down, but you want to get something going with this offense. That's not. Uh, it's not going right now. But you've got another series. Um, and we'll get into that matchup real quick here as we try to get ourselves out of here. Um, 126 innings the last two years for Jared Jones. I think that getting him to 
150, 160 is probably ideal. And I think that innings do matter when you look at the whole picture. I think it's going to even out. This start, he had 59. The next time, it might be 89 in five innings. You know what I'm saying? And and so, like, you just don't know where he's going to be. And they're going to... They're going to allow him to go a little bit in certain situations. And in those situations, there's going to be another time when you say, he's thrown over 80 pitches or 90 pitches the last two starts. This next one, maybe not. You know what I mean? So this is the first time he's thrown on five days rest this year. It w- it was. There's been a, b- a day off mm-hmm. every other time. Okay. Yeah. And 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 that's I miss what that. Shelton said. To, he said he's. They talked about this a long time ago, actually, because they saw it coming, and they're like, "Hey, that first time that you we're going to five innings or X pitches or whatever." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's been predetermined more than just like before the start. Like it was from my what I'm picking up on what they're saying. It's been yeah. a minute, you know, that they've been sure. planning that. So it, it's kind of one of those things that, uh, you know, I even say it'll even out. The 59 pitches, I understand, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it it's frustrating. And you would like to see him, oh, with 59 pitches, could he could he have done the sixth? Yeah, he could have probably done the sixth. That would have felt good. But it's that whole thing where they count how many times they get up and down that mm-hmm. you actually said. But like, so I don't know if you actually, because what they were talking about on the fan forum was from the, and I can't remember that guy's name that was on the fan forum. Um some months ago, right? But they talked to him, and I remember that conversation, but he, Gary talked about it yesterday where he said they actually count those like throughout the year. So like what you're saying, that that's a thing that they care about, but I don't know if, you know, I don't know if you were there where you realized like they actually count them and it's something that they keep tabs on. I feel like they do that. They've always done that. It's called how many innings have you pitched? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I think it matters because of, yeah, I guess I see what you're saying. <laughs> but, but yeah, but the the up and down, like I, it's yeah, a thing. Yeah, that's a good point. It is going to be, it, it, yeah, it is just how many innings are. Yeah. Essentially. Well, not necessarily because some of those you get up and you, you don't get, you don't have to get back up different starts i don't know i guess it all evens out but the last one you don't have to do it. yeah i guess yeah if you if you go seven innings and the first one doesn't really count either because you never went down depends you're the away team oh yeah okay so there so there's a caveat there right so they do count Mm -hmm. those a little bit differently but it probably isn't that far different i don't know maybe 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 not even the home team you're coming in before the national anthem and everything yeah yeah all right, so he's a stud, though. We like it. Yeah. And I just want you to sit and think, after being swept, that by the end of this season, you're going to have Keller, Jones, and Skeens in this rotation. And now there's about five other guys that you need two of them. Whether that's Perez, who's been great, by the way. Whether that's yeah. Perez, whether that's... I mean, let's go ahead and put Falter into the conversation for crying out loud. He's getting outs, man. He's getting outs. Or uh, Probably not Ortiz, man. I really like him out of the bullpen right now. He's doing a nice job. But Priester, Gonzalez, there's guys, um, you know, other guys that maybe are, are, are going to, you know, as we watch through this year, are going to be knocking on the door possibly. But... You've got a list of guys there. So this team's gonna, not going to get I, worse, Jake. Right. I I agree with you. And and here's one of the one of the sayings in baseball is always what? Ah, uh, didn't go our way today. At least we get to wake up and do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Right? So Yeah, and you can how put that How important how important is this? Honestly, like we got swept the first series we've lost this year, we got swept. Right. And then we get to sit and think about it the whole next day because we had an off day afterwards. Does that play into how you bounce back? Yeah. Or does it? I think it gives you, the further it gets you away from that stink, I actually like it. I think you wash that stink off a little bit and you Mm -hmm. can turn up uh, and, and actually, it's hard to wake up the next day and play well after 
losing, right? I mean, I think only mm-hmm. the veterans are really have that. Like the the rookies wear that a little bit longer. Getting yeah. a day off that's actually helpful. You know what I mean? Yeah, a much needed day off. I would say. I agree. So, uh, but oddly enough, you got Quinn Priester going out there against. And let's go ahead and get into it. Friday night, Brian Bella, B- Brian Bayo, who just <laughs> got that big extension before the year. Um, he's a good pitcher. So here yeah, we he go. And then you get Keller and Perez, and Keller will be going up against Cutter Crawford, who, by the way, this year has a 0-4-2 ERA. It's not going to be easy, but you're at home, you had a day off, and it's time to bounce back. And it's how you respond that will tell the story of your season, right? Mm-hmm. And so we'll see how they respond. And you know what? If they lose this series or get swept for crying out loud at home, that's when you really, that's when you have a hard one, a uh, hard time there. Yeah. But bounce back from that, right? You just keep going. It's a very long season. Yeah, you play 162 for a reason. Yep. That's the whole thing. Because in baseball, this kind of stuff happens. And so you play out a long season so you can kind of work those things out. Mm-hmm. So that's a fun one. Yeah. I, you know, coming off of a sweep, sometimes they're not fun. Um, <laughs> but I think that there was a lot of a lot of discussion to have. And there's stuff that we have on our list of things that we could talk about that we were like, we don't have time. We right. try to keep our Fridays a little bit shorter. We're here, we're, you know, we're we're 45 minutes. We're blowing past it. So that's it. that's it. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy yeah. your weekend. If you're going to the games, have a good time. Yeah. I thought about going to Saturday. I don't know if I'm the I am or not, but I thought about driving in and going on Saturday. I haven't decided. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Bucks. All right. Let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, cannonball coming, and let's go, Bucks!